Fuck Man for uh, spending your Friday night with me today. Appreciate it. Um, so before I get started, uh, I mean, he introduced me. I'm a student physical therapist at Mount St. Mary's University in Los Angeles. I'm up here doing a clinical rotation. I thought I'd make use of my extra time at night and try to help out, I guess. Um, so before I get started, I am not an imam or a chef by any means. These slides and these tips are just strictly from a biomechanical anatomical perspective. I did get all of my slides kind of um, checked out by a few different imams and chefs and stuff. But again, this is coming straight from a uh, biomechanical perspective, okay? I just want to put that out there so I don't you know, get in trouble with you. Um, so uh, basically, uh, the way this talk's going to go is I want to kind of go down the chain of the body and uh, kind of talk about a few things that I've seen, is, you know, growing up uh, in the community and now that I have the uh, knowledge of what proper movement and proper uh, uh, body placement is, some things that I feel like are, are kind of like red flags that I'd like to bring up. Um, so and that essentially, that's what ergonomics is, just proper form when you're doing different things. Uh, so uh, I am still a student, so objectives, you guys are probably familiar with the slide before every, every slide when you guys are in a, in a classroom. This is the stuff I kind of want to get done. Introduction, we kind of did that already. Uh, I'm going to give you guys the good news, the benefits, and, and I am, I'm a very research-oriented person. Everything I say, hopefully, inshallah, like there's, there's, there's been research done behind it. So uh, I'm going to tell you guys, a reason, I mean, we all know the benefits of prayer spiritually, and, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's all good uh, from that perspective. I'm going to give you guys the um, research behind prayer. Like there's some new research that's come out that uh, it describes the benefits of prayer. So that's the good news. And then the bad news is everything you guys are doing wrong. Or not you guys, but every, all of us together as Muslims, we're doing wrong. Uh, and then we're going to go over the neck, shoulders, upper back, knees, and then the feet. And then I'm going to show you guys what's what's wrong, how to correct it. And um, I'm going to have some final thoughts and then we can do a little bit of a Q&A afterwards. There's only two things I ask from you guys uh, in return for this time is make the offer me and my family and everybody. And the second thing is, I have a few surveys uh, in the corner over there. This is my first time doing a talk like this, so all of the uh, feedback is super beneficial. So if you guys could fill that out on your way out, uh, or during the Q&A section, or, 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 or whenever you guys have time. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first, I want to kind of go over what is physical therapy. Physical therapy essentially are movement specialists, okay? So they, they look at how you move and they can tell you what the wrong things or the right things that you're doing while you're moving. That's, to put it at a very basic level, that's what a physical therapist is. Um, they, they, some of you guys have been to rehab and then you dealt with physical therapists. Um, and then there's also the preventative portion of physical therapy, which is what we're doing right now. So you, all of you not necessarily are injured right now, but just if we do things, if we do things correctly and we start making corrections now, we can prevent damage further down the road. So this is, is good for, for you, for, for all ages, because it, it sets good habits from the start. Uh, so benefits of prayer. So there's some really interesting like, research studies that have been done in the last 10 or so years. So there's one um, that show it was a research study done in India. I don't remember by the exact author. I have the references at the end of the slides. But basically, what they did was they followed a group of uh, people that who uh, prayed five times a day, and uh, essentially what they found was there was a significant increase in knee. They looked specifically at the knee joint, knee joint flexibility, and long term uh, structural health of the knee. So already, we're on the right track. We have better knees than everybody else because we pray five times a day. So it's a, it's a really good thing, continuing to pray five times a day, it helps joints, which which seems like it's, you know, pretty intuitive, but just having that research backed up to it, you know, encourages people more to, to get into it and do it properly. Uh, another one I thought was pretty interesting was, so the number one killer of um, men and women uh, in America specifically is the root of the problem is stress. And what is stress caused by? You have a few different, you know, I'm not going to go into the physiology of the nervous systems in your body, but basically you have a nervous system that causes stress. So what they did was they put electrodes on people that were, they felt were devoutly praying. And what they found was this specific nervous system, which is called the autonomic nervous system, was significantly um, turned down, basically. It's like the fight or flight system. That's what causes stress. And they found that people that were adhering to prayer and that were sincerely praying, 
had a significant reduction in this system that causes stress. So you can extrapolate that information and say that, hey, prayer reduces stress, which reduces risk of stroke, which reduces a bunch of other things. So there are physiological benefits to prayer. So, uh, if, you know, it's a little, it's a little bit of uh, fun, happy, happy, good news there. So now I'm going to go over a little bit of anatomy. I'm not going to get too crazy. Basically, um, as you can see, so this is the spine. Okay, so I want to make some, some stuff very clear because there are questions that asked me that uh, different portions of the spine are, this is exactly how they're uh, labeled in the, in the human body. So we have the cervical spine, which spans to just about above your shoulders. From the, the base of your skull to the shoulders, then you have the thoracic spine, which covers the back of your chest where your lungs are, right like in front and behind your lungs. Uh, and then you have your lumbar spine, which everybody has issues with their lower back. Uh, and that kind of spans all the way down to about where you start feeling your uh, hips come out. And then you have your sacrum and your, uh, right under the sacrum, I didn't label it there because it doesn't really matter to be honest with you, is your coccyx, which is right underneath your sacrum. Um, so these are going to come back a little bit later, so remember these. I made them color-coded so you guys can go to them. Uh, okay, so the first, 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 first. I, I don't know if you guys pay attention, but next time you guys go out and you see people praying, no, look at their neck posture. Forward head posture is extremely common. So, but extremely common does not mean it's okay. Essentially, so I have some numbers there for the engineers. Uh, for every inch forward that your head is, you add an additional 10 pounds of force to your cervical spine. And the average, uh, uh, what's it called? I have it up there. The average adult presents with two inches of forward head posture. So what does that mean? An additional 20, 20 pounds on your neck just because your, your musculature is not uh, uh, adequately placed. So uh, again, like I said, 90% of the population is affected by this. So this is the issue. How can we correct it? Specifically in prayer. And this can be translated to many other things. In prayer, when you're standing uh, in prayer, you begin your prayer, actually before, before, before all of that, before all of that, everybody before they start prayer should always take a nice big deep breath before you begin your prayer. It is a really, really easy way to relax all of your muscles, especially in your neck, because think about, think about, everybody just take a deep breath right now, and think about what's moving when you're taking that deep breath. Your trap, your, your shoulders are moving, your chest is moving, your back is moving. So if you take a deep breath, and all that musculature is calmed down, it gives you a good, good way to kind of get in, start getting into these corrections. So. It was recommended to me by one of one of my chefs that when you're describing this to people and you're you're doing these lectures is always start with a nice deep breath before you start prayer and and, and you'll see you'll see it's going to be I mean once or twice it's not going to make that big of a difference but in the future it should start helping and start relaxing some of the musculature. So what the common most common thing that I've seen is when people are praying they have their heads down. Like this is terrible for your neck. And like I said, remember what I said? Two, every inch forward, it's 10 pounds down your neck. How many inches? So the way we base this from a, like a movement analysis perspective, the bottom of your ear should be aligned with your shoulder, okay? So this would be relatively, no, I can't really, I can't see myself, so you guys can kind of tell me. This should be relatively normal. So imagine if you're all the way down here, how much extra force is that onto your neck? Five inches. Five inches, boom, right there. So 100 pounds of extra pressure on your neck. And how and you're doing that five times a day and multiple knockouts per day. So imagine how much stress that's causing on your neck. And the problem with that with that is not just not just the stress, but where is that stress going? This position, you have no muscles assisting your neck. You're relying solely on ligaments. Ligaments are very, very poor healers. They do not heal very well. Muscles heal very well quickly. That's why you know when you work out and you have that. You know, you have that, that feeling after, what do they call it? They call it, um, yeah. oh, soreness, yeah, soreness. Uh, that is your muscles tearing and rebuilding. So your muscles are quick. That's, that's, what they're, that's what they're made to do. They're made to be torn and rebuilt, torn and rebuilt, torn and rebuilt. Your ligaments are not very good at that. So when you're down here, it's easy, though. It's easy to kind of hang out down here because you're not doing anything. You're relying on passive structures. Active structures of your muscles, passive structures of your ligaments and your tendons. And that kind of stuff. So... A strategy that, that you can you can start using and you can start you know educating other people is when you are praying, instead of tilting your neck, you tilt just your head. Your eyes should align where your uh, 
sh should be aligned to where your head forehead is going to be going. So instead of me going like this, and then my forehead is going to be going like going over there. I'm all the way up here. My neck is looking good, but I'm tilting my head. And tilting your head is a good way. So that's 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 another strategy to relax your neck. That's a strategy that a lot of people use. If you have headaches, a lot of people would stretch the the little tiny tiny muscles in the back of your neck. So you have your head back here, and then you just tilt your head back. And that's it. And that's where that's 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 where your head should be placed and your neck should be while you're praying. And this is not just, I'm gonna mention it a little bit later, but it's not just when you're standing. Also when you're sitting, you, your eyes should be aligned to where your forehead is gonna go. Not to not not down and like hanging out on these structures. So just that's just something to be to be aware of as far as the neck goes. Uh, shoulders. So I'm gonna ask all of you guys to stand up for me. I'm gonna show you guys a quick way, a quick way to kind of kind of uh, gauge where your shoulders are, where your shoulders are. So I want everybody just to relax. Don't, 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 don't move your shoulders down. Yes. So take, look down, don't move your hands at all. Look down and look at your hands. If your hands are facing, your palms are facing fully backwards, that's what rounded shoulders are. Your shoulders should be straight like this instead of like, because if, you, if your shoulder, if your palms are facing backwards, your shoulders are too rounded. So everybody take a look at your hands, see where your hands are. If your palms are facing directly on your side, you don't have to do anything. Keep doing what you're doing. But most people, their 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 palms are facing. You know, even mine, they're facing a little bit backward. So that's exactly what rounded shoulders are. Your chest is rounding this way because your you, the musculature in the front is getting tight, and those are easy muscles to get tight. So you guys, you guys can sit down. Just just kind of an easy way just to kind of check yourself. Like if you guys if you're walking and and you, you see, and you notice that your 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 hands are kind of going in, just open up your chest just a little bit. Um, so. Uh, Basically, what, how this happens is internal rotation of the shoulder. What is internal rotation? So this is, let's just say, neutral right here. This is neutral, neutral position of your shoulder. Internal rotation would be this way. External rotation would be that way. So to correct something being inside this way, move it out. Switch it up. Move, move, your, move your arms out and rotate them out externally. I have, I have some, some tips for you guys. So one thing, another thing that I see a lot in prayer is when... Uh, I mean, obviously, this is different for men and women because there's different positions of prayer. But uh, for the men specifically, and, so, and what I mean by uh, try to avoid having your arms in an L shape, this is an L shape. This is terrible for your shoulders. Having your arms out like this is terrible for your shoulders. You need to relax your hands. Your hands should be relaxed on top of each other, and open your chest. Be so everybody, I want you. I want you to kind of get over exaggerate that rounded shoulder, this, and then take a deep breath. It's harder to take a breath because you're closing the area where your lungs can expand. So if you open up your chest and your chest is open and you, you, your, your arms are relaxed while you're praying and you're activating the muscles in your back while you're praying. And, and, and you see, like now, now my, my shoulders are, are more aligned to each other. And even for the one, if you're up here, sorry, if you're up here, you can relax your shoulders. You can relax your traps. So up here, you're, you're, everything here should be relaxed. And then... You activate the muscles in your back to kind of pull everything backwards, just to get get it a little bit more uh, in line with everything else, and you'll feel your breathing will get easier. Uh, your shoulders, if you have any shoulder pain, it will it will it will it will decrease because you're putting a lot less stress on your shoulders. So this again, this is important, especially in uh, standing while praying, because how often are you how often are you doing this? You're doing this if you're praying five times a day, you're doing this a lot. Not a lot. Uh, so next one, uh, kyphosis. What we call kyphosis is so uh, interesting. Interesting thing about this is the things that we spoke of before are all associated with this. So this is something that will be instantly corrected if you do everything else. So there's no, you will never have straight shoulders, but your your back is rounded like this. It's all associated with each other. All the muscles are pulling onto the same bones. So if you correct one, you'll correct the other, and you'll correct you'll correct them. all of them are interrelated. So making corrections at different ones will help make corrections of the other ones a lot easier. So um, again, excuse me. Same issue with the um, cervical spine is the more forward you are, the more force you're applying to that 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 um, that part of the spine. So same 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 uh, same same thing applies. Uh, so that's why again, just correct the other things, and then this will be corrected as well. Um, so. This is probably the most important one. Hip and pelvis movement. 
Um, so most people are on the, um, not, I mean, obviously this is a little bit exaggerated, the one on all the way on the right, but most people are in that position where their pelvis is tilted to, post to posterior, which is backwards. Your pelvis is tilted backwards. From Again, it's another thing where you're just relying on the ligaments in your back. Where we want is that kind of the, the one all the way on the left. So, uh, so again, like again, long term, long term damage. You're relying on passive structures. You're not using your muscles. It's a lot easier. That's the problem. It's a lot easier. So, uh, a lot of people right now, I can I can probably tell you, ninety nine percent of the people here are sitting posteriorly pelvically tilted. How do you know if you're sitting posteriorly? Tilted? I mean, obviously these seats are a little difficult to kind of sit. You know, it's a, it, it's a little difficult. But what you can do is the you have these uh, bones in your body. They're called, you know, the, the layman's term is the sit bones. There's two bones in, uh, in your bottom. Wait, the best way to kind of, if not for you, to teach other people, is have those two bones all the way in the corner of the seat. This is not, this is not directly related to prayer because there's no situation where, we, where we're, I mean, it, 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 unless people are sitting while they're praying. But have them all the way in the back of the seat, and then that forces your body into this position where it corrects that, uh, that pelvic posture. Um, I, oh, sorry, I forgot something huge. It's when you're uh, going down in prayer like this. So a lot of the time, this is the this is the biggest one. This is one I get questions about all the time. So when you're going down in prayer, you see people bending at their back, which will I mean for the younger people, yeah, it doesn't feel feel any different. But 10, 15, 20 years of doing this, that's that's a recipe for low back pain. You should be bending at your hip. Not your back. How do you know you're bending at your hip and not your back? Your hip is attached to your hamstring muscles. When you are making the kua, your hamstring muscles should be the limiting force for you from you collapsing. So what does that mean? You should be you should be feeling a stretch in your hamstrings when you're making the kua every single time. So if you're feeling anything in your back, you're doing it wrong. If you're feeling anything in your um, any, I mean, if you're feeling uh, any any uh, numbness and tingling down your legs, you're doing it wrong. You need to you need to c correct your posture. But essentially, the easiest way to kind of put it is your hamstrings should be the ones that are taking the force of the movement. So when you're going down and you you feel your hamstrings stretching, and then another another point added to this as well is um, take your time in prayer. Uh, there's a spiritual, you know, benefit of prayer, but also like we're learning right now, there's a prayer is a five times a day stretch to, or more than five times a day stretch to your hamstrings. You're 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 lengthening these muscles that are your hamstrings are easy. Mine, I can barely move them, but uh, you're getting a, you're stretching your hamstrings, stretching all the muscles in your back, and so after you after you leave or you finish a prayer, not only do you feel good spiritually, you feel good physically, like you. You've, you've done a little bit of a, a, a stretching session and then now you're leaving, you're getting ready to go about your day. Especially Fajr, it's perfect. How many people stretch in the morning, at, that early at 5 o'clock in the morning? I mean, unless you're like a, somebody who lives at the gym, you're not, nobody's doing that. So if you if you have this thing where you're constantly stretching at 5 o'clock in the morning, you're stretching. At night before you go to bed, you're stretching. It is a great opportunity to take care of your body. Uh, so again, we don't want to be the guy on the left where we're bending all at the back. Again. Think a uh, hamstring stretch. You should feel it at your hamstring. You should feel the, the uh, what's it called, um, the stretch in your hamstrings. Again, like I mentioned before, uh, the uh, correct neck correction can also is also important in sitting. And uh, depending on, so this is a little bit more of a controversial topic, depending on how you sit during, um, uh, during prayer, uh, there are different ways, like I mentioned, always, you should feel like your 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 back should never be rounded. What is a rounded back? I'll give you. I'll show, I mean, I'll show you guys. So I'll show you guys first. This is what a rounded back is. So depending on how you pray, but a rounded back is essentially like this. This is a rounded back. Your back should be straight like this. So a normal curvature of the spine. I'll show you guys another another picture of the spine so you guys understand what the curvature should look like. So I'll show it to you guys. So a rounded back would be something like this. It should be it should be. Over. This should be normal. And then you are using muscles to maintain that posture, which again, 
is the whole point of what we're doing. We don't want to rely on the ligaments because right now, you know, and there's no, there's no age limit for this. There's no age limit for this. There's not a single bit of research. And as much research as I've read, as I've read that says there's this age limit for this type of stuff. There's no age. Obviously, there are medical issues and conditions and stuff that would limit this. But if you are a healthy uh, uh, person, none of these should be limited. Um, so this is a little bit of a smaller, smaller topic. It's just the pointing of the feet. I've been asked this question, so I, I added this slide in. There are a few people that, um, uh, so uh, the, what I mean by the pointing of the feet is naturally as uh, anatomically, we have about a, I mean, it varies from person to person, but we have about a 15 degree uh, rotation of the feet. So you, nobody's feet, or actually not, I'm not going to say nobody, most people's feet are not facing straight forward like this. They have a little bit of a rotation. Everybody has a little bit of a rotation, and it varies from zero to 15 degrees. What happens is if people are forced to, forcing forcing your knees and forcing you, so, so when things, the one thing you guys have to understand about the body is if you do something at one part of the body, it's going to affect the whole chain upwards. Your body is a chain of joints. So, one chain, one one movement down here is going to affect your knee. It's going to affect your hips. It's going to affect your. It's going to affect your back. It's, it's going to affect everything. There's no. I mean, unless you're like moving your fingers like this, then it's. But like for the most part, the lower joints all affect each other. So being aware that naturally you have that rotation of your feet. Your feet don't necessarily have to be straight forward. There is that rotation. So from what I've been told by uh, by some shoe. Is it's all the feet? The feet placement is about comfort. Where you feel comfortable to put your feet, that's where you should leave them. So don't feel obligated to keep your feet forward, and then you have knee issues in the future. Not, but they're not necessarily. You won't necessarily have knee issues if your feet are forward. But it's just something to be to be aware. Of. Your feet, your feet don't naturally point forward. Uh, so some final thoughts I had. Um, again, just to reiterate, I am a student. I, there's a lot of things that I don't know. This is just based on information and classes that I've taken and help from some professors that um, down at my university that helped me put this together. Um, and again, this is coming from a biomechanical perspective, not a religious or um, Sharia perspective. Although, again, for those that came late, I did get it um, kind of reviewed by some Sharia and just uh, stay away from any um, controversial topics. There's no normal body. There is a range of but there's no one normal body. So not everybody will fall into the um, categories that I've mentioned, but there are corrections that can be made for everybody. Your norm is different than his norm, and he's different than his norm, different than his norm. Everybody has a different body, and just being aware of that and being comfortable with where your body placement is, that's the number one thing. Be understanding where, like what, what works for you, what doesn't for, work for you, is going to be your key for, to success in and actually kind of preserving preserving your joints and preserving your body. Um, something is better than nothing. So doing this one one rakha in one day in one week is better than you doing it zero times. So just to kind of emphasize and reinforce this uh, uh, issue is there's a study done for. Um, Individuals that don't exercise. So um, the American Society of Sports Medicine or whatever released a study. Basically what they showed was people who had never exercised before, if they, they're the most beneficial exercise that they can do is one time, one time a week. No, no, sorry. One time a day, twice a week. One time a day, twice a week, consistently is better than you doing it four times a day, once a week, and then that's it. So make small changes. You are not going to correct every single thing on this on this PowerPoint in one in one sitting. Correct one thing, master one thing, move on to the next thing. And if and, and if they, again if they don't apply to you, then 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 move on to the next thing. So just being aware that something, one small thing, one small correction that you make will be extremely beneficial for you in the future. So again, something is better than nothing. That's that's if if you took anything away from this uh, this talk, it's it's that. So uh, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, sorry, it's kind of all over the place. Again, this is my first time doing a, a, a community lecture like this. So uh, I'm opening it up to any questions. Um, and uh, if you guys want, I, mean, the, um, I have business cards over there if you have any more, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask a little bit more privately or be around. And uh, any feedback, would, again, would be really, really greatly appreciated. So.
Yeah, so we talked a lot about the status position. Yeah. What is the safest or most efficient way to get up and play the So okay, so that's a good question. So the safest way I get so again it depends depends on the person, but um, so from sedge deck, it's exaggerating exaggerating the movement and using momentum has been the strategy that I've understood. But I'll double check I'll double check and look into that because I, I was focused more on the static position just because I felt like those were some things that can be corrected right away. But that's a really good question, uh, and I'll get back to you on that. One of the questions I had was you said um, the sit bone should be behind your heel. Correct. I didn't quite understand that. If you could so again, that again. Yeah, so, uh, so for that one, it's a little bit of a dicey issue just because there's different ways people sit when they're praying. Um, so, for example, if you do pray, I know there's there's some people that pray. They're unable to pray with the, you know, the, the, the way of the sunna where it's your, you're kind of on the side and one of your feet up. But if you do pray like, so let's just pray, let's say you're praying like this. So instead of your sit bones being on top of your heel or behind your heel, which again gives you that rounded, rounded uh, back posture. So if you put them behind your heels, you, autom you don't have to do anything. You force the spine into that position. So it forces this, 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 uh, the, the lumbar spine to be in the, in the most uh, neutral position. So that's what I meant by that. So that's, what, that's why I didn't go too deep into it, just because it's a, again, everybody sits differently, so I feel like that information would be difficult to, Portrayed in different people. Go ahead. Yeah, I couldn't understand that voiding position. <clears throat> is it confronting with the, the adult or parallel? Like voiding should be parallel or downward? Looking at the core. Oh, 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 oh. Look, look. Right here? This one? Yeah, well, do you see that? Oh, so this is an exaggerated photo. I couldn't find a perfect photo of somebody doing the doing core. Well, that is, is a, that's why I asked. So it so again, in uh, from a biomechanical perspective, where where you feel the pulling of your hamstrings is where you need to stop, and hamstrings stretch. So if it's not the first time, so let's say your hamstrings are stuck at this, but I'm not parallel, I'm not parallel on the floor, but this is as far as I'm going without bending my back. So continuously working on this and getting lower and lower and lower, that's that's what the goal is. So not everybody can, can get into that position. Right. No, yeah. So so ideal in a perfect world, you're a board. You're a board, yeah. But uh, this is just like for. I, I'm, I was talking. So when I was referring to this, I was referring just to the hip. In this in this particular photo. So continues the same question. So what should be the right angle? So it's exactly like he said. So uh, the the further up that you are when you're when you're in uh, the pool when you're down is it's going to put more pressure on onto the hamstrings but again we want we want the hamstrings to stretch we want them to be longer we want the core to elongate them because we want to be using them so it's like you said in turn from a from a uh uh at that perspective yeah you want it to ideally in a perfect world you want to be a board you want to be you want to be straight out like this um, and then and then you should again in this and in this position it, it puts your hamstring at a better mechanical advantage to to use them when you're So yesterday you were telling me uh, placing the hands in the right oh. position on the knee. Can yeah. So more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So uh, I was I was having a conversation with Adam uh, yesterday, um, and uh, one question that was asked was hand placement when you're doing the core. So a lot of times what, what people will do is they'll be pushing onto their kneecaps, which is easier. Again, it's 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 an automatic response from your body, especially if you're doing something so often. You're pushing down onto the kneecaps. That's pushing bone onto bone, which is not good. We never want that. We never want hyperextension, which is fully extending out and, and you're, you're having your bone on bone because that just puts you more at risk for arthritis. And especially pushing down. So from what I understood from talking to uh, some shoe is your hands should be grasping your uh, kneecaps, not pushing on them. No, they should be great. Your fingers should be open and they should be grasping your knee. Just to avoid any extra pressure, because again, the knee knees are are, are a very very delicate uh, joint, and they're easily injured, and they're really difficult to come back from from injury. That's a good question. Thank you. When 
you said minon, uh, born on born is not even newborn. Correct, yeah. Because yeah. you're at, it's an additional pressure. So if, if I'm down here and I'm pushing, I'm pushing down onto my, it's again, it goes back to relying on passive structures versus actually working. So it's just, I mean, essentially to boil it down, it's laziness. Like where we get lazy and we're just, we're just, okay, this is a lot easier than me focusing and, and, and putting myself in the correct posture. So, so technically, I'm not allowed to, because uh, I'm still a student. So it would be, it'd be, it would be, I don't know. I'd get in trouble if I was prescribing exercises to people that are that are going through uh, different medical conditions. But all I, what I can say is, especially for our, like, it, let's go back to this this point right here. Something's better than nothing. If you can do it one time, and then the rest is sitting. That's 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 you moving it around and you're avoiding uh, keeping it in the same position because because that's essentially what the issue is right so you're, you're you can't go down to suju because because your knees bother you so if you're able to do it is okay oh like this right now okay uh, we'll talk after we'll talk after um, just on the topic of arthritis do you have in general like advice for elders um, who are trying to make sure that they can keep training without sitting on a chair like tips or different things so what i would say this is a this is a fine line i'm crossing right here but what i would say is these uh, these positions these corrected positions they're corrected the the reason why they're better for your joints is because they lift the pressure off of your joints arthritis is you know there's no there's no protection of your joints you're going bone on bone and there's a lot of grinding and all that kind of stuff so if you do exercises similar that are mimicking these and that are are increasing or like strengthening the muscles that are lifting the uh, lifting the pressure off of these joints it will make it easier but again i mean you have to see a local physical therapist and Care for coming. Appreciate you guys. Please, please. Uh, my, I mean, my business cards are over there. If you guys have any questions, uh, and then, oh, um, and then the uh, feedback forms are out over there. I don't know if there are pens there. So. Do you have any handouts at all? Can you like slide to some of the? I can. I can provide the slides. I have no problem providing the slides. I'll give it to Brother Munir, and he can post them online. Yeah, of course.